Hello friends and folks, and welcome to another episode of Neutral Game, your newbie-friendly fighting game podcast. I'm Six Detmar from Scanline Media. Uh, and I'm Mirdrag, aka Real Soviet Bearer. Hi. And we're here this week to tackle month... Well, I mean, it is. we're also here this week. That's true. I didn't lie. But this is a monthly podcast. Um, we're here to tackle the latest and greatest in fighting games. Soul Calibur Six. Latest and greatest? I have heard people say that the soul still burns. What do you think about that? Um, well, for, for people who were really into soul, yeah, it burns. Uh, for people who weren't, it's kind of like warm, I'd mm. say. Can keep, can keep you cozy. I mean, like, they make like tums for that. You can just take some medicine. It'll stop. Oh, just a blanket. Just my newbie blanket. There is that. There is that. So, uh, I mean, Soul Calibur is a, you know, like the six implies. This this series has been around for a while. Um, what's your what's your history with this with this franchise? So I've I've only mostly known about Soul Calibur um, for the longest time, like for one and two, because I could never actually find the game uh, in my circles. It was mostly just Tekken and Mortal Kombat and various other things, but. Uh, I did play a bunch of three in single player, and then whenever I would play multiplayer, uh, three, four, or Soul Edge, I would just get my ass handed to me. Um, so I would get quickly discouraged and say, "No, the path before me is two D. I'm just gonna follow that path." Mm -hmm. So you have had some history with Soul Edge as well. I uh, I've always that's I feel like that's the sort of undermentioned member of the franchise because obviously it doesn't end in Caliber, so people forget. But I have never played that one. It's, I, I mean, it's essentially like going back to like Tekken one and two. Like most people don't mention it. Usually, when people talk about old school Tekken, it's Tekken three because that was the most mainstream one. Like it's even on the PlayStation uh, one classic. Um, so mm -hmm. Soul Edge is kind of like that. It's basically the Tekken one slash two to Soul Calibur, and it still handles pretty well. Like I played the, uh, I think I played it a bit last year or two years ago with people, and it didn't feel like, you know, one of the many 3D fighting games like Dynasty Warriors or various sort of knockoffs. It felt fairly competent. Huh. Huh. So you played a lot of 2 and 3, and then you sort of touched the other ones. Um, yeah. I have only played 2 and 3. I've never played any of 4, 5, 1, or Edge. I had a friend uh, who was extremely into Soul Calibur, like, like not competitive tournament level, but like competitive online level. Uh, mm -hmm. So I know a lot about the series and how it plays via him. Um, and my takeaway from what he told me was that, like, three and four were really really good, and then five um, was a trash fighter, and nobody in their right mind would play it. Huh. Yeah, five was the one that started adding like supers and stuff, right? Yeah, it was like there was a super. Um, there were various other mechanics. Uh, they swapped out a lot of characters because they went forward in time. So a lot of characters were like it's not Sophitia, it's Sophitia's like daughter or son or whatever it was. So a lot of characters got mm -hmm. replaced. Um, I don't generally like the term, but from my understanding, it was uh, casualized, a.k.a. Uh, they put in a lot of uh, mass appeal mechanics in a not-so-elegant way. Like, it wasn't really like how uh, Tekken introduced Rage Arts. It was more um, more impactful, so to speak. Um, hmm. And it seems the latest installment tones that down a bit in some respects. Well, okay, so we've talked a little bit about about the history and about how like it compares to like other three D fighters of its era, era and such. But like, how does this game basically control? So, it very much controls like a Namco three D fighting game. Like I've I've played Virtua Fighter and Dead or Alive, and they the movement there definitely feels much more different. And it's very hard to explain in what way it feels different. Uh, it's basically a lot of... Um, it's basically like 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 Tekken with swords, but uh, instead of 
having it go like, um, you know, you're you're going high, mid, low. A lot of it is also are you using a horizontal or a vertical move. Are you using a kick? Are you like like it's 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 a lot of like a lot of moves cover the same space, so you don't have like as much high low mix ups, uh, in the same way attack. And it's I think maybe you should take away because I'm having a hard time descri- describing this. I feel like I mean I don't know I the the problem is I can't compare it to Tekken very much because I never got into the part of Tekken where I didn't hate it <laughs> um, where I didn't hate it so um, I never really saw what people saw in Tekken to me Soul Calibur is kind of like what I wanted Tekken to be in that I feel like it's very much a game about like it's not that like it's as you say there's not that many mix ups there is some high low but mostly it's not about like can you block the mix up it's like can you be patient and wait for your time and know the spacing it's very much a spacing game it's very much a spacing game and it's very much a um know your matchup game and uh, mm. and, and, and you know that's like every fighting game and every fighting game you need to know the matchup but in this one you know if if I'm like really good at say Guilty Gear, if I know my character in and out and know all the ways I can use my character, then like the matchup, like when there's a new character introduced, is like, you know, forty percent of it. It's like okay, I just need to learn what this character can do, what their strong tools are, um, and you know, I'll be then fine. But in this game, it feels like knowing your character's moves is not as important as knowing your opponent's moves, like what they can do at any given moment. And at what speed? Because because the, you have like vertical and horizontal attacks as a category. There's not too much variation you can have there, uh, because all the moves here are super fast. Um, they cover around the same space, but because you can flow into them at different points, it's really important to know when your opponent can actually do a horizontal or a vertical. Like, can they do it from, like, neutral fast? Can they do it, like, after a specific string? You know, it's a lot about that. Mm-hmm. And also, I mean, like, there are, there are uh, like, one or two exceptions, but for the most part, there aren't really any special moves in this game. It's a game all about normals. And so, like, you know, you think about, like, Street Fighter, which has significantly fewer moves granted so maybe maybe it's better to use an example like tekken right but like you look at like tekken and you're gonna see the like your your uh kazuya do a lot of missteps right they've got a big move list but they have these special moves that they fall back on a lot um and in soul caliber since basically no one has special moves i think ivy does and like Taki sort of has one um there are like a few like sort of having them instances um but since mostly it's just normals a lot of moves look alike. It's not like you're just like, oh, here's you know, here's Ryu. He's gonna throw fireballs. It's like everyone's gonna swing their sword, and it takes a lot more nuance to recognize what people are doing. Yeah, like it's it's very difficult. It's very also difficult because a lot of it is based on this is an answer to this, but it's not always the answer to it. So, for example, um, universally speaking, a sidestep is the answer to a like vertical move because the vertical move is a vertical slice so if you sidestep you avoid the vertical which is why we have horizontals where if you predict somebody's gonna sidestep you do the horizontal and then you hit them that's kind of like what you would assume as a universal rule but what happens is well this particular character doing this particular vertical can actually hit you if you sidestep in the wrong direction because of the angle the vertical is and you don't know Mm -hmm. and and it's like and it's very hard to determine that that will happen because you need to have like really, really deep knowledge of your matchup and know that they can do that and know that that is the response to that. Because predicting that, like predicting what your opponent will do from the massive move list of Soul Calibur is what well, like, is ridiculous. Like if people can do that, like I and I assume people can. Like I have the utmost respect for them. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, like, there are even ideas, like, like chip damage is barely a thing in this game, right? I think only if you're, like, in soul charge mode. Well, but there are exceptions to that. That's, again, one of these character-specific things. Like, I ended up playing a lot of, um, so, uh, one, of the, one of the Soul Calibur traditions is guest characters, and then Soul Calibur Six, the guest character, there's only one, is Geralt from The Witcher. I ended up playing a creative character who was using Geralt's move list, um... 
and Geralt has a move where he likes he does a quick jab with his sword and then follows up with a jet of flame and it does crazy chip damage and is really safe and people aren't used to fighting Geralt and they just you know like it's just not how they think the game works because you're just like bang flames bang flames bang flames and you're just draining their HP and it just defies again like it's like they know that like oh I can just block and it'll be fine they're not soul charged but again a character specific that isn't true in this instance it is very exception based uh, and that's why it's so weird to me because um like I'm gonna go back to Daryl Live because that's the the 3D fighter I have the most experience with. Um, Daryl Live has like one exception based mechanic, which I think is really dumb. But in general, it's kind of like if it's high and you parry, and it's not a parryable move, the game will at least acknowledge it's not parryable and will force your character to sidestep because you guessed right. You guessed they would do a high move specific type, so there you go, you get a sidestep. But in this hmm. one. It's very weird because you assume things work a certain way based on the like base mechanics, but then to like add variety to it, then it goes, well, this character's move of that category does not work like that. And you need, like, mm-hmm. there is no way to like know that unless you play that against that character and had that happen, and then you know this character can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so... We're, we're, we're kind of like going away from our bullet point list, but I guess like I wanted to get that across that it is a very, very matchup specific game. Like if if, if I've, I've I've like been playing this a lot with my coworkers, and as soon as they learned uh, the character I picked. Uh, they had an infinite easier time. And until I learned their characters, it was just, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Like, I, I just lose. So it's 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 very much... You can learn to be flashy very quickly, but actually winning against people who know what they're doing and who know what you're doing takes a lot of, lot of experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's and I think that's a lot of a lot of the depth in the game comes from just like learning specific matchups as you say it does ask a lot of knowledge of the player but given that I feel like the reputation for Soul Calibur has traditionally been that it's a really casual fighting game I actually found that a welcome uh, realization. Yeah, it's it has depth in a very different way. Like like I said I'm very used to fighting games uh focusing on you knowing your character like you need to know your character's combos, you need to know your character's options, you need to know how your character deals with uh, certain archetypes and things like that. So coming into here, and basically every new character you face being a completely new thing you have to learn, um, is really strange. Like, I don't mind it, it's just not something I'm used to. Um, And the only really way you can kind of get away without learning uh, your matchup is basically if you pick a character your opponent doesn't know that character, and you don't know their character, and you just go full aggro before they can even do anything. Like, in that case, yeah, you don't really care what they're playing, but as soon as they know your character, you're kind of, like, screwed. Mm -hmm. Um, So besides, like, normals and, and, you know, movement, like, what other mechanics, like, you're, you're... Again, you're the, the more student of the of the free of the series, so I'll, I'll ask you to be the one uh, tell, talking us about the other mechanics, the sort of series unique mechanics. So, like for this game in particular, um, they introduced uh, I think critical edges were there in the previous game, um, but it's basically you have a super meter, and that super meter can reach up to two stocks, and to use that super meter, you can either do a soul charge, in which case uh, your character powers up and uh, the soul, the, your super gauge slowly uh, depletes until it reaches the first uh, uh, threshold. So if you have uh, like two meter and you use soul charge, it'll go down until you have only one meter left. It won't use up both meters. Um, and that soul charge powers up your character and how it powers them up depends on the actual character. Um, and even in some cases, like it drains your HP. Like if Killig does his soul charge, he slowly uses, loses his health. Uh, some characters get stronger moves, some get unique moves, um, some get like special properties that they have limited access to, now they have it, now it's more prevalent in Soul Charge. So it's basically a, if you don't want to use your super as a crutch, you can use this to just further empower your strategy. And the Soul Charge also works like a get off me 
uh, burst because it has very very short startup. Like you can get poked out of it, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't happen nearly as slow as a super. And then you do like this AOE bubble around your character, uh, and it doesn't damage your opponent, but it will interrupt whatever they're doing. So then you can basically. Uh, when well timed, uh, use it kind of like a burst from Guilty Gear or from Blaze Blue. Is there no version like I know in previous games there was a meterless soul charge? Is there no equivalent here? No, I did not see that. Yeah, me either. I just figured I was missing something because of precedent. But if there isn't, there isn't. You know, I not not to my knowledge, but like I could be wrong because there's like a bunch of mechanics, but I haven't noticed that. Um. And then there's a critical edge, um, which is your standard issue super, which everybody does the same way. You just press like the three attack buttons. Um, mm-hmm. There's like there's a speed variation between them. It seems like some of them have different startups. Some are faster, some are slower. Uh, some your character jumps in the air so they avoid lows when they can do it. Some characters just do it as a mid. Um, it's generally very risky, but you can like combo into it to make it more guaranteed, or if your opponent does a slow move, you can use it as a counter punish. And then some critical edges you can do uh, only when you're in soul charge mode, and I think only a few characters have them, and they generally do something ridiculous like 80% of your health bar, but they're really tough to land. Huh. Yeah, I don't think I've seen any of those. I think Killick uh, and Aswell definitely have them, but I think a few more characters do. Um, Interesting. So that's kind of like the, the meter stuff. Uh, there are also guard impact, and from what I've been told, so that's kind of like a series staple. But like previously, guard impact is it's basically your parry. So like you press uh, guard and forward, and your character does this like green flash, um, and that parries everything. Um, it used to be segmented to, uh, like in the previous games that you had to do it like up uh, like high or low, but in this one you just do it and then. It, um, parries highs lows um it parries grabs as well it pa- basically can parry everything even like if you anticipate it you can even parry a super wow um except for like parrying a super you basically have to input it before the actual super flash animation happens uh because if you do it when the fla- like when the animation starts from your opponent it's not gonna land uh and as, as someone who is very into parries in all the games, like, Guard Impact is a ridiculously easy parry system. Um, it lingers, like, long enough, and it's a fairly... Like, it has really good coverage. Like, you can get punished for it, but compared to, like, other games with more elaborate parry systems, this is pretty... Um, it's pretty good, but also it gets really weird because... Um, you can do a guard impact, and then you parry your opponent, and then you hit them, but then they guard impact and parry you back, and then they try to hit you, and then you can parry back and guard impact, so it has this like weird back and forth where until somebody decides to delay what they're doing, uh, you'll just have this back and forth of parries. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. that definitely is like a, a like a serious, serious staple thing. I remember seeing that a lot in Soul Calibur 2, is just people guard impacting back and forth for a while it's it's pretty funny because you have like you do it instantly and then the opponent does it instantly and then you both wait for a while and then another person does a delayed guard impact so it can get pretty funny um Mm -hmm. uh and then there is the reversal edge which is i think completely new to this installment and which is a pretty big point of contention um and how reversal edge works is our character enters this reversal stance uh where they're like uh uh hands glow white and while you're in that state any attack uh that hits you including like grabs anything that doesn't break a block essentially um uh anything that like hits you gets absorbed you don't take any damage and then when you let go of your um uh your reversal edge input, your character kind of leans forward and hits uh, your opponent with a special attack. And then you both enter the reversal edge state. And now the reversal edge state is probably the most similar looking to Injustice's wage system, if anybody knows that, like the clash system, where the characters kind of look at each other 
and oh i'm gonna get you no i'm gonna get you and then each of you m makes an input and tries to guess what the other one will input so and this one is basically you enter a state and you can do a horizontal a vertical uh a kick or a guard and if you... or or a sidestep also yeah or a sidestep um and some characters have some special reversal edge situations inputs if you both input the same thing, you clash, and then you go into the second stage of it and repeat the same thing. Um, and if you clash again, then the one who initiated it wins. So if, let's say, like we clash and we both do horizontal moves, and then we both do horizontal moves again, I win because I initiated the reversal edge. Or if you block the second time and I hit you, we initiate or I, I, I win the reversal edge because I initiated it. But what can also happen is... If in the first stage I attack you, but you guess a move that beats me, uh, you win. So it's this weird parry which puts you in this guessing game state, um, which relies just like on a button press. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't particularly like it. I think it's really bad. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts on it are. I actually like it. Okay, uh, I'll let you go first. Uh, I mean, I feel like the game needed another defensive option, and I think it's a good, um, like, first of all, I think the game is pretty relentless in its pace, and I think it's nice to have the little breather. It's not as, it's not as full-on as the Injustice, like, 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 you're going down. Not today, Superman! It's just sort of this moment of both of them looking at each other. I feel like it's, it's less lame. It's less lame. <laughs> um, but it does have you that moment of breather, and then I think you have enough options plus character-specific options that I think it is a legitimate mind game. And also, you can power through a reversal edge. Like, there are moves I will use when I know someone's going to reversal edge or I anticipate it, and I will just, like, it'll just do enough hits that you'll punch through and punish them for it. There are, and, like, I don't think it's too powerful of an option, and I think the guessing game is, is usually fairly enjoyable. So I, I absolutely do not like the guessing game of it, because... Um... Usually when, so, so let's say like that, like when I have guessing games, I kind of like to take into account character options, um, because if I can take account to character options, then I know, hey, this move is, you have a strong, so I can account for that move happening, and then I can, you know, make a, an informed decision based on you having like stronger and weaker options. But it seems that mm -hmm. when you're in like the reversal edge state, it's literally like playing rock paper scissors like it's that type of mind game like i can only base what you're gonna press based on what you've been inputting so far and maybe based on your health bar like like do i know you're gonna play at risky or not so there's kind of like the the character factor kind of moves away and it's more like i need to know you as a player what you're gonna do yeah definitely and i i mostly like i've only played with friends i have not played any randoms um, I can imagine if you're doing, like, random online matchmaking, this mechanic is not at all satisfying. But against, like, playing against my friend Alan for, like, the, the 12th time in a night, it's like, fuck it, I know what you're gonna do. You're gonna be, you're gonna two verticals in a row because you're an asshole. <laughs> so, so that's the thing. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a good reading tool if you know the person, or if you somehow manage to get, like, a very good read on a complete stranger. And I've been, mm -hmm. I've been generally really good about, like, reversal edge. Like, I landed more than I don't. But mm -hmm. it is still, like, it doesn't feel... I, I'm not used to, like, just reading people. I'm used to, like, reading people plus character. Like, how do people use a specific character? That's kind of, like, what throws me off and what kind of annoys me with reversal edge. Because I can't do that. That's fair. That's fair. And also, like, on a very... Um, on a very objective competitive scale, and I don't know, actually, I don't really think it matters that much, but, like, on a very objective scale, um, parries are generally extremely risky mechanics because you don't get... You basically perform a high-risk move for a reward, uh, like a damage reward, which might be equivalent or sometimes lower than just, you know, hitting your opponent. Um, mm -hmm. And then you have, like, Reversal Edge, where the flow is, you make a read, which is already a high, like, like a parry-like read, which is a high-risk thing, so you can enter a wager system 
which is another high risk thing. So it's like two step high risk. So I don't really. Well, but you also the initial hit you do damage as well. Yes, yes. Um, and you you do have the advantage of if you get like if you get two, uh, if you get two draws you win. So you win as tiebreaker. Mm-hmm. So so it, mm-hmm. yes, it is more in your favor, but it is still like a very risky thing to do. Sure, that's true. I don't think it ruins the flow of the game. I'm also like very much the opinion that if you kind of like took it and removed it from the game, it you wouldn't lose out on much. Like I guess you would only lose out on meter gain because doing reversal edge just boosts your meter ridiculously. I don't know if you noticed that. Mm-hmm. Um, I do feel like you'd need more defensive options because I don't feel like guard impacts alone are enough. Yes, I I, 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 I agree with yeah. that. I agree with that. I I do think that like. Just relying on guard and guard impact, it feels like there was something else there that you should need, but like I'm not sure it's reversal edge. Like it almost feels like if you could have like a defense oriented soul charge rather than just a soul charge or something like that, that might have helped, or like a metered guard or something like that. Yeah. That's true. That might have been a good idea. Like a metered parry, I think, would have worked really well. Hmm. Um but yeah, um mechanics wise um, uh, I've been like I've been having like a lot of struggle like understanding a lot of these mechanics, but I think we will go into that a bit later when we go into more like like personal experiences. Mm-hmm. So, how do you like the single player in this game? This game is chock full of single player content for you to experience. I only like the character creator, and I tried playing both story modes, and I absolutely despise the writing. Like. I cannot stomach stomach through the single player content of this game. Uh, so I will. So there are, there are two single player modes primarily. I mean, like there's like you know fucking survival mode and whatever, but like who cares? That doesn't basically doesn't count. Yeah. Um, there's the like character based one where it's like, oh, what's Killick's story? What's Maxi's story? And all that. Um, and then there's the create a character story mode. And I guess I want to talk about the creator character story mode and the character creator at the same time. So first off, just across the board, as you say, the writing is really bad. Um, the only reason to do the character stories, the only reason to find out what Ivy's up to, is because it gives you currency that you can use to unlock a few extra pieces in the character creator. Um, it is genuinely worthless. I've played a lot of it, and it's just like, none of these stories are at all compelling, none of this dialogue is at all well written, nothing interesting happens. It is like, it's it's a rehash of Soul Calibur 1 and 2, with an added, a couple of added characters who are not very interesting, except for, they're fun to play, um... And just just some bad, bad, bad writing. Yeah, and, and when we say bad writing, because like bad writing is like generally a catch-all critique, and anybody could say that. The thing I hate about the Soul Calibur writing is how grandiose and purple it is, but not in like it. It's not like in the scale. It's like the choice of words just like makes me like sickened. Uh, there's this one. Because the narrator, when you ever you play regular matches, does this like sp- like spin around the arena and like does says something, and there's that moonlight arena where he says something like a cacophony of like I don't know deceit or despair or something like that, and it's just I can't stomach that. I, I I'm I'm a simple man. I prefer more direct uh, writing. I I I have a big problem with generally the setting and tone of Soul Calibur and that it's all about how there was this one sword that was so mean that it destroyed the world. And that's fucking stupid. Like the evil exists in this world because the Soul Edge is a real messed up sword, y'all. And like that's just lame. That's just really really lame. And everyone's story being either they want the Soul Edge or they got the Soul Edge and it ruined their life. That is every single character yeah yeah no i i I, is yeah yeah i i I can't like it's at least at least the tekken 7 story was dumb but you could stomach through it Mm -hmm. and there was like inner character drama and stuff there's really not that the only like the only conflicts that occur in this entire game are people wanting the soul edge and not having it that is the entire conflict of every single character it's just really really boring 
like at least have some like some dumb shit where like I don't know fucking like Ivy wants to kill fucking Aswell because she doesn't like his hair. That would be better than what they have. Yeah, it feels it's very weird you tell me that there's no intercharacter conflict because it feels almost like a lot of this tailor made. Like I know when I play Os- Aswell and. He has different intros uh, for all the characters except... Well, f- he has one intro for all characters and one intro for Cervantes and Nightmare because, like, he really hates them. And then one for uh, Gro. So it's kind of like, oh, it looks yeah, like there's uh, room Gro- for inter-character stuff. Yeah, Gro is maybe the one exception. Gro is like, man, I really fucking hate you as well. You uh, I, you killed my friend. Oh. And that's it, you know. Oh, he doesn't want the Soul Edge? Oh, no. No, he doesn't care. Oh. He's he's just mad he killed his friend. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll play Grow then. I respect that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but he does have an evil arm. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what's Aswell's uh, story? I'm curious, since I play him. Aswell's story is that he wants to create the ultimate Soul Calibur and Soul Edge so that he can remake the world because humanity sucks. Oh, Oh, that's so dumb. It sounded more grandiose when you play him. Yeah, no, none of it. None of it actually is like. Th- so the create a character story mode is first of all excruciatingly long. Just because like every fight is just like we threw together a create a character bandit and beat them, and sometimes there's a weird special effect going on. There are like RPG elements, but all they are is how much damage do you do and how much damage do you take. That's all that matters. Um, and it's just like. A billion quests, all of which amount to, like, you hear a rumor of the Soul Edge. Oh, it's not here, but this pirate sure is mad. And it's just that over and over. And then, like, you bump into, the, like, the Soul Calibur cast every now and then. And they just act really weird in ways that don't, like, like, Maxie's just like, Oh, my good friend, enter name here. It's so good to see you. We hang out all the time, remember? And you're like, what is happening? <laughs> Uh, have you played like Soul Calibur's uh, 3's story mode, the one with with a creator character? I have the Chronicles of the Sword. Yeah. I am quite fond of. Yeah, that was like really awesome. I thought they would bring that back because it was like this weird mix of strategy and fighting game that I really liked. Mm-hmm. And I think with that, we have to transition to talking about the character creator some because one of the things that irks me, everyone's going on about how great the character creator is. You have fewer options than you had in Soul Calibur three. Uh, that seems to be a trend, by the way, because, um, like, Tekken, uh, Tekken's customization, uh, from people that are more familiar in the, like, with the series have told me, uh, it got worse, like, with each new installment. Like, you got less and less mm. options. Like, I can, like, can definitely attest to, uh, Tekken Tag 2 and Tekken 7. Like, Tekken Tag 2's customization was, like, ridiculously better uh than sevens and then somebody told me oh yeah by the way sixes was better than tag two how weird because like in 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 chronicles of the sword it was like okay so in this you can choose a character um and you can create them and there are some options there and there aren't that many outfits but there are enough to kind of do something um and then you pick a fighting style based on one of the characters in the game in soul Calibur three you based it based on one of the cal- characters in the game and by the way there were more characters in three and then also you had like character creator specific options like like lance or dual swords oh, or like right, there were a ton right. of extra fighting styles right. that were character creator specific that just aren't in this game. Right, I remember that. Like there was a like, katana stuff and like samurai style that wasn't Mitsurugi's. It was like a different samurai style. I remember that. Yeah. yeah, it was possible to have a character that didn't just feel like you were a like a palette swap of someone else. You were your own fighting style. Yeah. And it was fucking cool. Yeah, I, really I had a it. person who used a lance, and it was like, this just, like, this feels like you invented a move list for a character that isn't in this game. It's neat. I completely forgot about that. But yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, also, Lizardman being, de- like, relegated to create a character uh, only thing. Since he used to be a character. Mm hmm. Um, but yeah, no, the character options, like, seem fine. I'm kind of annoyed with the. Uh, flow of the character creator like it seems very cumbersome to change colors or patterns and everything like it just doesn't flow as smoothly 
Uh, yeah, and there are a lot of weird limits, like you can only have like two stickers per item and stuff. But, you know, that said, I still have made some things that I'm I'm pretty happy with. I've spent a lot of time in the character creator. Um, I don't. Do you have any creations that you're proud of? I mean, I made a disco as well that I am extremely proud of. Like he has a leopard uh, coat, uh, an afro, and uh, uh, a starfield uh, starfield pants. Mm. It's really good. So my main character is a cat girl knight who plays like the Witcher. Um, and then I've got let's see, like I have a. Uh, a big mummy that's dressed like a big lady mummy that's dressed like Luffy from One Piece, who uses nightmares move lists because I'm an idiot. Um, and then the one I'm actually genuinely proud of is I remade uh, 6-0 from uh, Near Automata, and uh, she looks pretty good. No, um, I've been playing with the. Uh, I did a stream uh, with people from uh, my Discord and. They were all basically showing off their characters, and uh, yeah, they put me to shame. They made some really damn good designs. Mm-hmm. Um, and on- online in general, I've seen people even use um, characters' movesets to great effect. Like somebody made a uh, helicopter uh, with Yoshimitsu's moveset, so when he does his helicopter move, <laughs> it actually looks like a helicopter. Um, <laughs> and then somebody made a uh, Waldo uh, did look like a giraffe when he was in his uh, f- backflip stance, like when he was like on his back on all fours, or a, a Waldo, which I think when he does a specific move, like a jumping move, he ends up looking like a Magi Carp that's on land. <laughs> like I have seen so much. Like, like yeah, we said like character creator is worse, but like people have been making ridiculously good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean the character creator may be worse, but now there's online. So you can see what people got up to, and, it, and therefore it feels more impressive because it's easier to share the creativity. Yeah, and I, again, it's like my only problem is how long it takes to make stuff, and uh, this is mostly me coming from a very uh, character creator-oriented MMO where I could use the mouse to just adjust everything really fast. So at least if I had like a cursor option on the PC to actually, or even like a console, like if I had a proper cursor instead of like the snap-through menus thing. Uh, it would have probably, like, lowered my time spent, the, like, creating a character by half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no doubt. Um, and then another thing that's interesting. Um, so, did you play the tutorial in this game? Uh, so, my experiences with the tutorial in this game is going into training mode and opening something called combat lessons, I think. And then that told me how to play my character, except it really didn't. Yeah, just a wall of text of like, hey, this move's real good, you should use it. And it's like, so to okay. give, me, give me an example, because I was playing Aswell, uh, I went through combat lessons, and it's like, do this move from Axe Stance, do this move from um, like Shield Stance, and I was just going through it and not understanding, like, how do I enter Axe Stance, how do I enter Shield Stance, I don't know, nothing tells me how, uh, and like, mm-hmm. I had to have other people actually tell me how it works to understand it. So when you go into the character created story mode, you like you get in and you're and you're like you start off and you go through the mandatory like opening and then it sort of kicks you out to a world map and there are two destinations and one of them is just like the story mode and one of them is just another place you could go if you wanted to. And if you go over there, there is like a 10 mission tutorial teaching you all the mechanics of the game in depth. Yeah, I really wish it there just was... just sort of hidden off to the side. <laughs> I really wish there was, like... Like, when you start a fighting game, literally the first message should be, do you want to go to the tutorial mode? Not hide it away behind menus and, st- and weird stuff. Yeah. It's it's a really it's a really baffling choice, because it's honestly a pretty good tutorial. It doesn't teach you anything character-specific, but as far as generally teaching you the mechanics of the game, I think it does a surprisingly good job. Yeah, I'll probably need to check it out, uh, although I'll probably figure out most of it by now, uh, by brute-forcing mm-hmm. it. Right, right. So I guess that's basically how the game works. Um, I was hoping the Season Pass would have released some of its content by now, but that has not occurred. We still don't have a release date for any of the characters or the character creation stuff. I mean, I guess Tira was day one, but she's also 
not interesting. Yeah, I, I don't particularly like her. Um, but yeah, I, I guess we can kind of close it down and just like give our general impressions. We've been kind of talking about how we feel some mechanics work and how don't, but like, what what have our experience? Uh, it's just, what have our experiences playing been? Mm-hmm. So you've been playing as well, then, huh? Yeah, I I, I tried playing. Uh, oh god, what's her name? Uh, is it Taki, the one with the Tonfos? Yeah, uh, ta- that's Talim. Talim, yeah. I I tried playing Talim, um, and then when I realized how complicated the uh, stance transitioning was with her, I switched to Aswell because I figured, oh, I might as well have the new character advantage, uh, since he's new to the mm. series. Uh, and I've been having a lot of fun with him. Um, he's fairly complicated and non-standard because how he works is he doesn't have one weapon. Uh, he kind of has, he has three weapons, and then depending on direction the direction you press when you attack he performs a different weapon so like if you press forward attack it's an axe if you press a uh, neutral attack it's uh, like two swords and if you press backwards attack then it's a shield and spear um hmm. and then what you essentially do is once you perform a move so let's pr- say you do the axe move uh you enter axe stance and then you have uh, a button combination like b and c which is a unique attack. So, for example, if you're in axe stance and then press B and C, um, you uh, hit downwards with the axe very quickly and perform, like, a juggle grab. Uh, Or if you are in shield stance and press B and C, you do this kind of, like, low guard guard impact move, which is also, like, a DP, like the sword and the, the, the spear and the shield just spin around you upwards. Um, So it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, uh, because a lot of it is just juggling between stances and trying to mask what you're exactly in. Um, and then he has a lot of moves that are dependent on which stance he's in, but he has some moves that put him in all three stances at once. Um, hmm. Like when he rides his shield and then all his weapons attack forward, then he is in, the, what's it called, like awakened stance or uh, ascended stance, something on A. Um, mm. and then when you do specific moves, he uses all the weapons at once. Uh, for example, he has, like, a guard break move, uh, which is, like, an overhead attack with his stance weapon, but if he is in all three stances, then he does a guard impact and an overhead, uh, and it's also a, uh, unblockable move. Wow. Um, so that's basically what he is. Um, he seems to be very slow with his moves in general like he doesn't seem to be a close range character he's more like mid to long range and then Mm -hmm. he has some very strong close options but only if uh you manage to get them through without the opponent reading it Mm -hmm. also he's extremely fabulous like that's one of the reasons i'm playing him (laughs) like when he when he when, when he does his super uh he turns around uh, and he says, accept this with my love, and he just, like, raises his hand and clenches his fist, and there's, like, a massive explosion behind him, uh, and mm-hmm. he just looks like he's dancing all the time. Like, he even has breakdance yeah. moves. Yeah, and he sort of gestures, like, well, for some of his moves, he's, like, gesturing and making sword swing as though he's composing, and it's very, yeah. Also, uh, when he uh, when he hits you with the super, he applauds. I don't know if he's applauding himself, or I think he's applauding the opponent for being uh, such a good combatant, even though he just like smashed him with a super. Very sportsmanlike. He is extremely annoying, and I'm I seem to have a talent of picking very annoying characters, so that's pretty good. That's that's fair enough. I I also seem to have a talent for picking annoying characters because so I basically have three characters I want to talk about. Um, the first of and some of them less than others, right? Um, the first is the one I'm maining. I'm maining a created character version of Geralt, and Geralt's move list is mostly very like bread and butter like sword stuff, um, just very like solid normals and and options. Um, but there are two things that make him sort of gimmicky right one is the magic um first off he has he can do the different like signs from from the witcher so he can do like he can do a move where like he conjures up a shield while he runs at you and anything you hit him with will just bounce off and you'll get like sort of like in a day state so he just this rushing forward move um he can uh you know do like the the guard like damn chip damage with the flames 
He just has some interesting little options to toss in there from that. Um, and then there's how they represented the two swords mechanic. Um, earlier, I asked you a little bit about how soul charge works because I never see it. Oh, okay. Because never soul charge against Geralt. You will get destroyed. Geralt normally, like, has most of Geralt's moves use the steel sword. A few of them use the silver sword. And the thing about the silver sword is, if the silver sword hits you, and you are in soul charge, like, you get, your armor instantly gets smashed, and you go into, like, like fatal, ca- fatal counter, like, slowly floating through the air state, where Geralt could get, like, a 50% combo. Are you fucking showing me? That's so dumb. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. If you are in soul charge against Geralt, Geralt will just fucking murder you. That's <laughs> so dumb. Um, cause the idea is that the sword's for countering monsters, and by soul charging you're drawing on, I, I don't fucking know. But that's how it works. Uh, uh, before we go on to the two characters, uh, two other characters, I'm just gonna say I do say that's bullshit, but also uh, I am confident that every single character in this game has something that is supreme bullshit, and somehow it's okay because even when they do supreme bullshit, your character can probably do also supreme bullshit. Mm-hmm. Speaking of supreme bullshit, um, another character I've spent a decent amount of time with is Nightmare, mostly because I have that that um, mummy who uses Nightmare's move list, and I just think she's hilarious. Um, I named her Big Luffy. Um, sh- Nightmare apparently has a mechanic that I don't fully understand, which is called Revenge, which is a combo breaker. Oh, yeah, that's the same thing Secret has, I think. Yeah, if you're like... If you're on low HP, you get a stack of revenge, and then when you use a revenge move, he does like this bubble that does a fuck ton of damage. It does a fuck ton of damage, and he can interrupt being comboed with it. Like, you can get hit and just immediately yes. rage out. Yeah, I think that's the same as Siegfried's. Uh, it's basically, yeah, when you're low on HP, you get this stack of revenge, and then you can do that. And you can... Do, well, I... I I don't, I don't know how, maybe it works differently for Siegfried, because with Nightmare, you can do it at high HP, you can do it multiple times around, you can oh. do it constantly. Oh, okay, okay, then it's for Siegfried is probably, I don't like, you have to take damage, and then your character will have this glow, and I think for Siegfried, it's usually when he's on low HP, but maybe Nightmare is all the I time. Think, yeah, I think with Nightmare, it's basically any time you get hit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like, with Nightmare, like, I have no idea how to play Nightmare. I'm also undefeated with Nightmare. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> it's one of those things like you need to find somebody who is like has a lot of experience with Nightmare and that they can call you out. Mhm. Yeah, it seems it seems pretty absurd. Um the other one is just real quick. I spent a little bit of time with with Raphael and Raphael I just think has really interesting like a lot of weird a different approach than Voldo. Voldo has a lot of like weird acrobatic moves, whereas Raphael has just a bunch of ones where he like like contorts his body in ways where like he attacks while dodging. Um and those are those are neat and I want to see a little more of that. Yeah, he looks like a very uh, technical character. Uh I probably would have picked him up if I wasn't going with like gimmicky sword summons. Mhm. Well, no, um, it does seem like, uh, it seems like each character has their own set of, like, dumb stuff they can do. Like, even Talon has this weird thing where if she's, she goes from a stance to something like a point-blank wind hadoken that just takes off, I think, like, 50% of your health. It's so strong. Yeah, it's terrifying. And then, like, you're playing Siegfried, and Siegfried just has, um, a ridiculously fast moves with ridiculous reach. You play Cervantes and he has juggles for days and you play Sophia and she has unreasonable mix-ups. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just like everybody seems to have something that is really, really good. Uh, which I can kind of respect because I'd rather have a game that's... I don't know how balanced this is in general, but I think it's better that everybody has something that everybody can say, oh, that's ridiculously strong. Like, I love games that kind of try to keep everything balanced, you'd sometimes find characters that just don't have anything that's strong, or the thing that's strong comes into play under very unreasonable conditions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, I don't know, as as a as a person who 
has I, we both played some of the Soul Caliber franchise. Are there like any absences you're really feeling on this roster? Um, not in particular. Like I, I didn't really like main any character. I kind of wish we had uh, what's her, what's her name, Hilde. Uh, yeah, that's the one I was gonna say. Is I, I really like Hilde's design. Yeah, I feel like her design and someone who has like a long range weapon that's not necessarily a staff or a like uh, what's it called uh nano uh fuck off sword it's 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 uh what sound mina has the the stick with the little blade at the end oh yeah i know mm, i can't remember what it's called either i know exactly what you're talking about yeah there. yeah but i kind of wish like we had like i, I think a lance or a, a spear um like proper spear would have been like also very interesting mm-hmm. um but in general, I think like the ro- the core roster is there and it's pretty fine. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think anybody misses the previous guest characters. Um, I f- I feel like they would have benefited from including Heihachi, to be honest. But I guess they didn't mm-hmm. want to. Yeah, no, I think Heihachi. I mean, like there's there's such a gra- there's such a grand tradition of guest characters. I mean, like you've had everyone from like Lloyd from Tales of Symphonia to Yoda in this franchise and comparatively having just Geralt feels pretty subdued on their part. Well, Geralt makes sense because, uh, Namco does the console publishing for the Witcher. Um, so that's mm-hmm. probably from that. Uh, and we're getting 2B, which I think is a pretty cool addition. Uh, that's true. That's true. Um, they haven't revealed the, was it the second or the third? Uh, I don't know how many more DLC characters they need to reveal. I mean, at this point, it's kind of like, what do you want? I would be pretty cool if they revealed Hakuman because, hey, they worked with Ark on Dragon Ball Fighters and now they're on good ter- terms, so here's Hakuman or something. But I don't think they'll do it. Yeah, that would be a that would be a cool addition. Um, but as you say, I I don't expect to see anyone from from any of the Arxis games. Um, I mean, like, I don't know if we're gonna have guest characters. Honestly, I would yeah, I would expect someone from Tekken or. <laughs> Fucking who knows? Maybe they'll just throw Noctis in this one as well. <laughs> no, please um, no. He would certainly fit in just fine. He would just be like like <laughs> Aswell with less swords. Um, I, I I think growth uh, kind of covers the JRPG protagonist uh, archetype. Oh, but he's not well dressed enough. I mean, that's what a character creator is for. I guess that's true. Well, the, and we do have those character creator packs uh, A and B coming with the um, the season pass, which I believe they're supposed to add around fifty pieces mm-hmm. of character creator content each. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we'll get like a nice like a nice like tuxedo or something. Because gosh, they, you need something. It's it's hard to get a crisp look. Yeah, I feel I feel like like they. You kind of covered all the ranges of characters in terms of like combat ranges, like they have hot, like short, mid, and like long distance characters. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. think they should like include a character with guns or something because that would be no. ridiculous. No. But like Cervantes has a few gun moves, but that's enough. Um, mm-hmm. I do think Heihachi would probably be a really good fit. Like I, I think a punching close range character would be interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think you're wrong. I think that would be a, a nice. And maybe this is the time that they finally that Kiryu Kazuma finally makes it into a game, a fighting game. I I mean yeah they can fit anybody in. He fall he fell through a time portal and got, went to the past. That's what they did for Heihachi and uh, Soul Calibur. Kamuro Cho looks really fucked up. I've got to bring peace to this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, do you think you'll be playing this in the future? It's not going to be my main game. Um. And especially with uh, with Smash Bros. coming out, which I'm personally quite excited about, um, it's it's going to take a bit of a backseat. But I I know I'll come back to it now and then. It is to date, it is the only 3D fighter that I legitimately enjoy. Yeah, I I'm I'm I have on and off days. It seems with it, like one day I'll play with people and just not be able to do anything, and I'll get super mad with myself because I don't understand why I lost. And then the mm-hmm. next day I'll win a bunch of matches and understand why I won and feel good. And then the other day I'll lose but understand why I lost and feel good, and then win and not understand why I win and feel bad. In general, yeah, for me, fighting games is all about like improving myself and understanding. 
uh, my losses and like how to improve and where I made the mistake. And Namco games do a really bad job of telling me why I lost. Lo- That's extremely true. Like, like it even happens in Tekken. Like, I'd lose in Tekken and be like, I don't understand, like why none of this worked like were they making right the right reads or was i making the wrong reads like it's very hard to tell and in this one is well, because you spent the entire match lying on the ground doing that swimming motion well That's why well i only do that when people don't know how to counter it but when they do yeah, I, I stop but no i don't i don't i don't i, I yeah I will probably keep playing it until people drop it but i'll be honest uh dead or alive is coming out like in February, I think, and that's my go-to 3D fighting game, so I'll probably play that more, but this will probably be a... I will play it as long as my colleagues at work play it for lunch breaks, and then when they give up, I'm just gonna like, give up as well, and probably just come back to it at random days like I do with Tekken. Like, sometimes I'll be like, oh man, I really want to play Tekken, and I play it for two days and then stop. I was gonna say, even if the soul still burns at the end of the day, you are a fighter. Yeah. Yeah, I I really I knew this was gonna happen because this happens with every every Soul Calibur game I have played. Like I just cannot think of the on the wavelength that this game requires. Like it is, I'm I'm completely, like on on the different mindset for it. And, but but that said, this is also a a podcast aimed at uh, newbie friendly uh, games, and I will say this: um, if you want to play a game that feels like you are doing something on a very low level. Uh, Soul Calibur is basically like Tekken 7 in that regard. I say Tekken 7 is more like that because you don't have guards and reversal edges in Tekken, so it's a bit more focused. Um, and But if you want to look fancy, um, this is a good game for that. But just know that if you want to get like serious about it, I would say this is much harder than... like like, a lot of 2D fighting games on the market right now. Like, like getting yeah. really good at Soul Calibur, as in, like, mid to high level. Like, you're gonna you're gonna have an easier time getting to mid level in, say, like, Dragon Ball Fighters than you are in uh, Soul Calibur 6, I feel. I think that's probably true. Um, I will say for, for my money, if, if, the, if the question is Soul Calibur versus Tekken, um, there's, like... With Soul Calibur, I think that with the character creator and stuff, there's more things to do for the average average casual player. I think there's more, like, flair, and I do also think that the the fact that there is a tutorial, no matter how well it's hidden, compared to Tekken's complete lack of one, is, is a pretty big deal. Yes, I agree with that. So... But I think that's it for us here. Um, next month, the episode we're not. We're, I'm still figuring out the details, but uh, Mia Drake, you're going to be on. Uh, you're going to be on a trip, right? Yeah, I'll be on uh, Macfest um, or our Super Macfest uh, start of January. So I'll be away for mm-hmm. two weeks, and I will not be here for the next episode. But if you're at Macfest, mm-hmm. uh, you can hit me up and say hello. Uh, and for my money, I, I, you know, I haven't locked things down but i'm planning to get another guest on here and and have the sh- well not another guest a guest you were not a guest this is your show <laughs> um but have a guest on here and and do an episode even even with with mia drag's absence i don't think we'll be able to fill that void completely we never could but we'll be able to get some content out and talk about some more fighting games hopefully just, just yeah it'll be fine just just yeah have fun and imagine there's a bear somewhere looking over over you. Okay, I think <laughs> I can do that. All right, Mia Drag, wh- where can people find you on the internet? Um, so you can find me on Twitter.com. I am at MDKII. Uh, that's MDK Roman numerals 2. Um, I am generally responsive, so you can hit me up there. You can also find me on Twitch.tv slash RealSovietBear. Uh, I stream a bunch of different things, sometimes fighting games, sometimes not, so you can find me there as well. And where can people find you? Yeah, I'm at 6 Detmar on Twitter, S-A-X-D-E-T-T-M-A-R. My pinned tweet there has all of the shows that I do. And then um, 
I guess two quick shout outs. Um, one is the Patreon, patreon.com slash Scanline Media. That's me and my friend Jennifer Uncle, and we're, we're doing all kinds of work over there, podcasts and articles and all sorts of things. And then also I appear to be getting back into the world of amateur Dota casting. Um, so that's a thing. I don't know. Keep an eye on my Twitter. I may announce that I'm, I'm casting another match because that's fun. Well, that's it for today. Uh, happy holidays for me because I will not be here uh, next month, but you six, you can do your happy holidays next time. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be here to wish you happy holidays at that time as well. Uh, peace out, everybody. <laughs>